Hi all. The chess world has lost a great, great original inventive chess player. One of the most original and very strong strategically positionally. This player is Michael Basman. Yes, he's passed away recently and I want to do some videos about his amazing games. One really shocked me in 1990. Simon Bibby against Basman in the British Championship round four. Let's have a look at this game. E4 from Simon Bibby and Basman plays H6. He knows the value of surprise. And although this move might be used by chess beginners, what if you were a tactical and positional monster and using this could actually you overcome the opening and just get the opponent to improvise. So the classic pawn center is set up. So what could possibly be bad about White's position? Nothing so far but a6. We have f4 and now c5. The center is there constructed and now it's attacked. We have knight f3. If d5, this game could kind of transpose into a variation structurally at least of the Benoni, for example, like this. And the knight could come to e7 as example. Now white technically is doing well here but you know it is a position to transpose to. So anyway we have knight f3 and now Basman plays g5 so it's a gambit here positional kind of gambit. F takes h takes and you'll notice that the pieces are auto developed on their original squares. The knights need time to come to the center you know the the, the phrase like knights before bishops because the knights need time to kind of attack things but the bishops from g7 it's directly attacking a key central square and the same with the other one if it got to b7 it would be directly attacking a central square. The rooks auto activated here. We have bishop takes g5. The bishop goes to a great location now bishop g7. So pressure on d4 pressure on b2. We have knight c3 and now c takes d4. Knight takes d4 now knight c6. We have knight takes c6. If knight b3 d6 and in this position Black could play, for example, Bishop g4. And okay, it's better for white, but black has active pieces here. We have knight takes c6 though. B takes bishop c4. Queen b6. So this is causing some concerns. It's hitting b2. And there's also another lurking threat. Bishop b3 was played. Perhaps this is a bit of a mistake. Queen f3 might have been better. And there's a crazy line. Queen takes b2. Queen takes f7 check, king d8, and let's imagine queen takes g7, queen takes a1 check, king f2, queen takes h1, queen takes h8, king c7. And here, after bishop f4 check, d6, queen takes g8, white is winning here. Yeah, as you might suspect, because queen a1, there's knight, there's queen g7 for knight d5 coming up, or knight b5 to win the queen. But anything else, so this is winning the queen. But if anything else here, if rook b8, queen g7, and then white's attack is crashing through. So yeah, there's crazy stuff on queen f3, but it does seem to favor white basically. Yeah, it looks pretty scary. But uh, bishop b3 was played. And now the first interesting tactic what would you play here with black for 100 points? Okay. Rook takes h2, a really nice tactic. We have rook takes h2, which is a mistake. Best, it seems, is rook f1, and that looks at f7. If rook takes g2, queen h5, that's exploiting that weakness of the last move and looking at f7. And here, white should be better. This position should be in white's favor. So, for example, a4, bishop takes f7, it's in white's favor. But rook takes h2, and this gives white a lot of tactical concerns in a theoretical sense. and soon to be a practical sense. Queen g1 check, king d2, queen takes h2. Black has equalized now. This position is now equal after that tactic and the way that white reacted to it. We have queen f3, okay, looking at f7, but now queen d6 check. Now king e2, and this is a theoretical downside here in this position, this skewable configuration. I would say a theoretical downside, but sometimes the distance to such theoretical downside is not what you imagine. It's not a thousand meters, it could be just a centimeter. And here, you know, how do we prove it though? Because how on earth would we skewer? 
Would we secure with this bishop? How on earth would it land on g4 later? This requires a lot of imagination and creativity. If instead king c1 was played queen g6 to defend f7, and it should be an even position, this position should be actually even now. The tempo gain is useful, knight f6, and black actually has a small edge. Queen d3, quick, you know, exchanging off queens, black's not going to be worse here now. It's equal on pawns, it's equal. So king e2 though, we have queen g6, and there's one tiny step closer to being a pain with bishop g4, because this pawn has been unlocked by unlocking that pawn and protecting f7. So it's kind of attacking and defensive, this move queen g6. We have bishop e3. If bishop f4, we can immediately see danger, d5, threatening bishop g4. If king f1, bishop g4, d takes e4, this position, black's actually got the edge now of the king f8. So anyway, bishop e3. Now we have a5, rook d1. And now not only there's a skewer there, but you know, there's a full skewer possibility of other pieces as well. King d2 would have been safer if a4, knight takes a4, knight f6. It's about even. But with rook d1, brilliant series of tactics now to make bishop g4 an absolute reality with tempo so not just a theoretical downside being exposed but with tempo the tempo express train is being used here now by basman so first what would you play in this position a tempo express train is created brutal stuff i mean it's one of the more brutal games i've seen Basman play bishop takes c3 so this weakens a4 control gives another tempo so white's kind of compelled to recapture now if instead d5 have been played the plane with Lina, d5 instead of bishop takes c3, then king f1 to avoid bishop g4. And this position we skewer anyway, and we get an advantage anyway. So black's position was already pretty strong. Knight takes d5. This is not helping white's cause. Bishop a6 check, rook c8. This is just going to be better for black. And in fact, black threatens e6 here to trap this bishop on d5. If white has to grovel for the exchange of queens, black's just better there. Material up. So anyway, but this... Is so much stronger. It means that this tempo is introduced a4. And now another brutal tempo, d5. Here we go, the express train, tempo express express train, looking at exploiting that skewer. We have bishop takes d5. If e takes d5, sure, bishop g4. If king d2, then we're just taking the bishop. So bishop takes d5 was played, but now, in fact, Instead of even take, taking that opportunity, we just have c takes d5, and this is brutal. So the skewer, without any controversy at all, is being exploited. So if the queen moves, we're just going to play bishop g4 check and pick up the rook. Brutal stuff. Yeah, absolutely crushing. So yes, just in the end, that's great just to play like this c takes d5 end of game if bishop g4 in fact there is a, a snag here which is bypassed what can white play here if this was played too quickly that would ruin things actually what resource does white have yeah check all checks it would be ruined with bishop takes f7 check hitting the queen so queen takes queen takes g4 and white's doing well there two pawns up so yes interesting stuff so yes this is the way to play it just take this bishop which was threatening bishop takes f7 so hawkeye to the end brilliant tactics i hope you enjoyed this one so for me basman is an inspiration to many players who like inventiveness and surprise value openings we're in a world of computer says no to things that are unsound but you know a lot of us just play for fun and entertainment and it's you know, the fun factor, which is often more important, basically, if you're a chess enthusiast. And, you know, players like Simon Williams carry on that tradition at the high levels. Grandmaster Simon Williams with fun, entertaining variations. Yeah, chess, for most of us, is, is to be enjoyed. And Basman, with his openings, not just made his games enjoyable. 
He made the whole tournament enjoyable. I remember Sutton Congress was totally livened up for me with the presence of Basman and even playing Basman. I managed to get a draw, but not, you know, the opening, he played the grub against me and he got a nice big advantage. I was lucky to get a draw. But he, he livened up the whole tournament just with his presence. This kind of entrepreneurial chess inventive spirit. And we see a lot of his innovations like G4, even being played by Magnus Carlsen on, on the faster time controls nowadays. He was well ahead of his time. Moves like H4 anti Grunfeld. He mentioned that. That was years back. And now it's uh, kind of a very interesting alternative explored by Grandmasters. He was well ahead of his time in many respects, as well as driving British chess forward through organising gigantic junior events throughout the country. But I remember him from also you know the quick plays i just remember his dominant knights his enormous peace activity his beautiful chatmate combinations he just made chess have an elegance to it through these weird and wonderful openings his games are absolutely elegant from what i remember a real inspiration a real character a treasure of british chess okay rest in peace michael basman thanks so much Comments, questions, likes, shares. Appreciate it. Spread the word of Basman. Okay. That's your